centre of mass of binary stars. Stars often occur in pairs, orbiting their common centre of mass, like this. To find the position of the common centre of mass, if we call one star mass m1, the other mass m2, and then the centre of mass will be on a line joining the two, and it will be closer to the larger mass, in this case m2. If the stars are a distance L apart, and we call this distance from m2 to the centre of mass x, then this distance will be L minus x. Rather like with moments where the force times the distance turning anticlockwise is equal to the force times the distance turning clockwise, in this case the mass multiplied by the distance from the centre of mass on the left will be equal to the mass multiplied by its distance on the right. So we can write that m1 times its distance l minus x is equal to m2 times its distance x. Expanding out the brackets gives this expression which we can rearrange to give this and then factorize out the x's to get this expression we can then rearrange to get the distance x from m2 to the centre of mass is equal to m1 times their separation L over the sum of the masses. Although the Earth and Moon are not stars and therefore not a binary star system they do both orbit their common centre of mass. So here I've replaced m1 by mm, the mass of the Moon and m2 by me, the mass of the Earth. Now the separation between the Earth and the Moon is 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. The mass of the Moon 7.3 times 10 to the 22 kilograms and the mass of the Earth 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So using the expression found previously we can now put in the numbers given above and it gives x as 4.6 times 10 to the 6 meters. So the common centre of mass of the Earth-Moon system is located 4.6 times 10 to the 6 meters from the centre of mass of the Earth and 3.8 times 10 to the 8 which is their total separation minus that distance which gives us 3.75 times 10 to the 8 meters from the Moon. The Earth has a radius of 6.4 times 10 to the 6 metres and this means that the common centre of mass of the Earth-Moon system is located within the body of the Earth. We can now calculate the time period of two stars following circular orbits around their common centre of mass. If we find the period of star of mass M1 this will be the same as that of the other star of mass M2. The mass they orbit around is effectively the combined mass of the two stars, m1 plus m2. Well, the force on the star of mass m1 would be given by Newton's universal law of gravitation, which is the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of m1, multiplied by the mass of the common mass, m1 plus m2, over the distance of separation, r squared. This is equal to the centripetal force, m1 r omega squared, where omega is the angular velocity given by 2 pi over the time period t. We can substitute into here to get this expression. Now rearranging for t gives the time period t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of their separation cubed over the gravitational constant multiplied by the sum of the masses. R, in this case, just to stress, is the separation of the stars. It is not the radius of orbit of either of the stars. Although not a binary star system, I'll again use the example of the Moon and Earth in orbit around their common centre of mass. Here we have the values. They have a separation of 3.8 times 10 to the 8 metres. This is the mass of the Moon and the Earth and the gravitational constant. This is the expression we've just found, and so if we put in the values given, 
this gives a time period of 2.3 times 10 to the 6 seconds which gives us the correct value of around 27 days.